Hello and welcome to another Digital Media Academy how-to, creating trap drums in Ableton Live 9. My name is Tyler Winnick, and I'm the lead instructor for digital audio and music courses here at Digital Media Academy. In this how-to, we're going to go through the basics of drum programming for use in trap music. Here are the basic system requirements needed to run Ableton Live 9. Trap originates from the southern portion of the U.S. and is a combination of different music genres like hip-hop, crunk, house, and dub music. It's becoming more and more popular each year. Okay, so here's a project in Ableton that I created for this lesson. We've got some drums, risers, falls, a synth track, and some vocals. This is typically the, the formula for a trap song, so I'm just going to go ahead and play it a little bit and give you an idea. So we just have those drums kind of riding along there with the synth line. This is the first part, and then we have a build up. And this is the part that makes you want to dance when the drop happens, and it's building up to the drop, which is the next part. All right, so. So that's basically what we're going to be working with today. Now let's go ahead and stop all those clips, and then I'm going to come over here and open up our drum pattern. Now we have a kick and snare, Now that's our most basic pattern, and then we have the drum build, and then we have the full drum pattern with the hi-hats. And notice how those hi-hats are alternating note values from 8th, 16th, 24th. That's really popular in trap, is just manipulating those note values. So let's go ahead and start by creating a new empty track. I'm going to create a new empty MIDI track, which the keyboard shortcut for that is Command Shift T. I can also go up to Create Insert MIDI Track. So now that we have a MIDI track created, we want to load up some genre specific sounds, sounds that are typical for this genre. So over here on my desktop, I have a folder called Trap Drums, and in there I have some kicks, some snares, some hi-hats, and a few claps. We're going to have to use the claps, but this is a good example of what sounds sound like for the genre. So what I want to do is come over to my MIDI track, make sure I double-click it so that I'm in the detail device view, so I'm seeing my devices down here. And what I want to do is start with an instrument rack. So I go to Instruments, Instrument Rack, and I drag that down and drop it in my device view. So now see how it says drop an instrument or sample here. So what I want to drop in there first is what's known as a sampler. Now that's right here, sampler in the browser. I'm going to drag that down and drop it right there. All right, and then it says drop a sample here. Now I'm going to go back to my desktop, and I'm going to grab that kick that first one I like. I'm going to drag that one and drop it there. All right. So now I want to click this little tiny button right here to open up each one of my instruments in the rack. So I can see that my sampler here is loaded and it's named kick one because that's what my kick was named there. So I'm just going to rename that by highlighting the kick one section and hitting command R and I'm going to just name that kicks because I'd rather have it kicks. And I'm going to come over here and rename the sample to kicks. So now I want to assign this sample to the keyboard so that I can pitch it up and down. That's something that's very popular in Trap 2 is the pitched kick drum. Now you could hear it in these patterns. So if I hit the kick snare here. So notice I pitched the kick drums up and down. And now what I want to do is click on our previous track. And I want to hit this zone button right here. Just go ahead and click that. And that opens up this zone area here. Now I can choose the range in which I can play the sample on the keyboard and pitch it up and down. Now what I want to do is drag it so that it's from C2. So if I highlight on the edge and drag it over from C2 up into C3. Okay, if I zoom out here. All right, I've got my sample there. Now I want to go to the filter global tab which is right here filter global and I want to change the voices down here to one 
That way, when I hit multiple kick drums, they cut off, and it no longer plays the release from the other kick drum. Because this was a really long kick. It goes boom, boom, boom. I don't want them to overlap. So I got to change that to voices one. All right, and then the next thing I want to do is adjust my release all the way up, 60 seconds, as long as the sample is, so that when I hit it, it will play it. All right, so now I've got my kicks loaded up and my zone mapped, my release stretched out, and my voice is set to one. Okay, so now we want to do the same thing for a snare. I want to grab, go to my instruments over here in the browser, go to instruments, drag a sampler and drop it underneath. And now notice I have kicks and then an empty sampler. Go back to my desktop, grab the snare I want, which I want that first one, it's nice and clicky. Drag and drop that one there. All right, go to my zone. And now I want to map this one to go from D3 up to D4. So I'll have a full octave or 12 different snares. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is a little different with the hi-hats. I want to go back to my instruments, and I want to grab now a drum rack and drag that and drop it down. Okay, so what a drum rack allows you to do is to add a bunch of different samples here on this rack, and then they're mapped onto the keyboard automatically. So when I drag my hi-hats down, it will play when I hit the C1 key or the E1 key, so on and so forth. But since I mapped my snare all the way up to D4, I want to go to my drum rack and go over here to this little area and move up to the E4, because that's I got D4 and then E4, and that's where I want to drop my first hi-hat is on the E4. So if I go to my samples again, hi-hat, I like hi-hat one, nice and tight, all right. So then now my hi-hat's loaded up, and it looks kind of similar to what it looked like in the sample, but you're just seeing the sample here. Now if I hit this little play button, I can play the sample. Okay? Now, what was happening in my original track was I added something called an arpeggiator to the hi-hat. And what that does is allows me to play the hi-hat at different rates, depending on the tempo. Which, in this session, our tempo is 140 beats per minute. So I zoom back out here. So if I want to go to my MIDI effects, notice there's an arpeggiator up here. I want to drag and drop the arpeggiator onto the hi-hat right there. And notice the arpeggiator plugin is loaded for the hi-hat. And right now it's at a rate of one eighth note. So right now it's going to be playing eighth notes at 140 beats per minute. So let's, if I click and hold, see it just plays those eighth notes. All right, so what I want to do is rename this by clicking on the sample, command R again, and do hat one eighth. All right, so I got my one eighth note hats there. All right, now I want to copy and paste this onto another key. So I hold down the option key on the keyboard, then click with the mouse, drag it to the next key where I want to have it located, and then let go of the mouse, and there it is. Now I want to change the rate on the arpeggiator on that one to be 1 16th, and then rename it 1 16th. So now I have All right, so I'm going to do that again. I'm going to copy it to F4, and I want to change that one now to 24th notes, rename it 124th notes. So now I have Now I'm going to copy this to A4, change it to 132nd. Boom. Change the rate here to 32nd notes. Now I have and then copy it one more time to B4 and change it to 48th notes. And then rate 48. Now I have. All right, so just to cover, we have kicks, snare. I'm going to rename that to snares. Boom. And then I want to rename this drum rack. I'm going to rename this hats. 
So now that we have all of our kicks, snares, and hats loaded here properly in our instrument rack, we want to go ahead and program a pattern. We've only covered the basics of choosing sounds and creating kits in Ableton. Stay tuned for part two of this series where we program trap patterns using MIDI notes. Thanks for watching.